you toss some enrichment into your snake's enclosure, do they even like it? We're going to find out. Or actually, we're not going to find out because there's no way to tell if a snake actually likes something. But we are going to see how they react to it because I've got spy cams. Welcome to the Green Room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. We're going to toss a spy cam into some snake enclosures today. It better not be my camera. I don't want any snakes crawling on this baby. Well, you're in luck, Kent. That thing would be a terrible spy camera. What are you talking about? This is a great spy camera. It's all black and stealthy. It's designed to run the compact VHS tape. I just don't want your snakes crawling on it or trying to eat the camera or anything. Understood. I promise not to use your camera as a spy cam. Even though it would be a great choice. For those wondering, I have Dolly with me right now and Stella is on the, um, oh, Stella's right, right here on the ladder wandering about. We're going to do this with ball pythons though because I saw an interesting video the other day from Rob at Royal Balls and Rob is a breeder. He's based in Malaysia and really smart guy. I click on his videos occasionally. He keeps ball pythons very differently than I do and that's okay. He's got, he, he's a larger breed. I mean, he's not a big breeder, but he's, he's got more snakes than I do and he keeps them on paper with a water dish in opaque tubs. And um, he's got very healthy, long-lived snakes. They breed, they eat. Uh, that's fine. And I've always said that, that different people keep snakes different ways. I watch his videos sometimes. They're always interesting. He talks about uh, snake behavior and things like that. I don't always agree with the conclusions that he comes up with, but that's okay. If I only watched people that I always agreed with, I wouldn't be watching much. So uh, it's, it's great, though, to get a different perspective. And he did an interesting thing. Uh, for this particular video where he put a spy cam in his snake's tubs to see how they reacted to something in their tub. And what he concluded was that his breeding age males looked at something new in their tub as a threat. You know, the idea was that you should be careful about, about putting enrichment into your snake's tub if they're a breeding age male. But what if I do that experiment here? My snakes have never, as long as they've been with me, have never lived on just paper and a water dish. They're used to things being rotated out of their enclosures. They've built the neural pathways, I believe, to in their brains to deal with different things in their enclosures, out of their enclosures. And that's why I have such cool, placid snakes. Or do I? Wait till you see the not cool, not placid, crazy snake footage that I got. But anyway, regardless of that, Rob made a good point. A snake is still a snake and they still have instincts. When a male ball python gets to sexual maturity and, and breeding age, they're going to have very strong instincts. So, you know, in my mind, regardless of whether I feel like I've helped them to develop neural pathways to deal with different things in their enclosure or not, a breeding ma male snake might look at that as a threat. So let's find out. Quick super dwarf update. Stella lost her roaming privileges because she was trying to get to the ground and I can't have her on the ground when I'm trying to shoot a video. So I've swapped her out with Echo, who's just up, up here, I think above where the camera can see. But she's definitely in hunting mode right now, so if she comes down and like bites my ear or something, then I guess that's my fault. I don't know how it is, but I guess it is. Are you still thinking about when I said I had some crazy snake footage? You are, huh? And you're probably not going to stop thinking about it, so I'll just show it to you. But let me set it up first. Usually the inspector who lives back there in the vivarium, usually his personality is placid and shy. If I, if I pull his hide off, he'll like uh, coil a little bit tighter into a ball. If I pull him out, he uncoils and hangs out with me for a little bit, but he'd rather move away. So he kind of slowly moves off. He's just, you know, he's fine, but he's never tried to bite me and, and he just would rather be on his own. That's all. He's a normal ball python. Uh, he did once act out of character last year, and you may have seen that video. That was when I pulled him out of his girlfriend's tub and put him back. He went nuts one day during breeding season. But that's the only time he's ever acted out of character until the other day when I tried to install a spy cam in the vivarium. So you guys, I'm working on installing this camera, and the inspector was just in his hide there, and he got real mad that I was messing around in his enclosure and he's popped his coils out to show me that he does not want me messing around with his stuff. He's doing all this arching, all this pushing me away type behavior. Doesn't like it at all. So it's going to be interesting. He's clearly doing this sort of male breeding 
thing because he's usually not like this with me. You know, if I touch him, he's like, get away from me. All, all that kind of stuff, that arching and pushing me away. So it's going to be interesting to see how he reacts when I put an inanimate object in the enclosure. The, uh, the little camera is going to be, is going to be uh, hot. It'll be a warm, warm camera. And so he might react to that. And then I'm going to put something else in there. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to put something else in there to... Uh... Oh my gosh, look at that. He is... He's like, get away, dude. He's never struck at me before, but he could. He is not happy with me right now. Hey. Look at this. Look at this posture. This is crazy. He's like, get away. I do not want you in my situation right now. He still never struck at me, but he did everything else that he possibly could to tell me that he was not happy with my presence there. And this is actually a really good example of breeding male behavior when they're acting defensive and confrontational, when they're telling you they don't like something in their enclosure. It's very different behavior than if he's just tongue flicking on something to check it out or crawling over the top of something that's in his enclosure. If one of the snakes doesn't like something that I put in their enclosure, you're gonna see that kind of behavior that you just saw. Not Probably not as dramatic because I think the inspector knew that he was confronting me and not an inanimate object, but at least you'll see probably some, some coil bumping because we see that a lot from ball pythons, right? Put a, put a rat that your snake has refused next to the snake and watch them bump it away. They, can, they know how to get rid of things that they don't like. So uh, this is the kind of behavior that, that I'll be looking for as opposed to just gentle tongue flicking, uh, crawling over something, stuff like that, checking something out. You know, being, sometimes snakes are really curious about things and they'll just sit there checking them out. Um, I've seen my snakes do that a lot, so I expect to see that in the in the camera, uh, and maybe some some bumping. The inspector is not used to a ton of changes in his enclosure. I don't randomly throw items in there and change stuff out like I do with the ball pythons that are in tubs. They often get enrichment items changed in and out, whatever. The inspector is used to some plant changes. That, that happens occasionally where I'll pull a dying plant out if it's not doing well and I'll add something else. That's happened occasionally. Um, and he comes out and he's actually been free roaming a little bit lately. I started free roaming him a bit. So he's getting used to stuff like that. But out of all my snakes, he's not used to a bunch of different things in his enclosure. My guess is that if he has a problem with anything, it's gonna be that camera, if not both the camera and the whiskey sleeve that I'm throwing in there. Hey guys, Future Bob here. So the inspector did kind of his normal behavior that night, which was really surprising. He seems to not be interested at all in the camera. He checks it out a couple of times, but doesn't bump it or anything. And same thing with the whiskey sleeve. He crawls over it. Uh, he's usually out of his hide a few times throughout the night and he kind of cruises around and this is exactly what he's doing. Um, the whiskey sleeve hardly moved at all that, that night, which is really surprising to me. It'll be interesting to see how the other snakes that are in tubs react to, to these things. Now, the other thing that Rob mentioned, and this is a really good point, is that if you're taking an enrichment item out of one snake's enclosure and putting it into another snake's enclosure, that could be a problem, especially if these are breeding age males, because if this whiskey sleeve was crawled on, let's say Ron, who's another breeding male, crawled all over this whiskey sleeve, and then I put it in the inspector's enclosure, that's really gonna cause a problem because it's got that scent of that male in there, and we don't want that. So any enrichment item that I use, if it's a disposable item like a toilet paper roll for the young snakes or the whiskey sleeve or anything like that, that's never seen another snake before, and it's usually in that snake's enclosure until it gets thrown away. And then if it's something like, I have these wood, these wood stays, I've got all kinds of stuff that's more permanent, if this comes out of a snake's enclosure, it gets thoroughly washed and disinfected before it goes into another snake's enclosure. So uh, be really careful about that, that you're not adding other snake scents into a snake's home, because that could get weird for them, especially if they're breeding males. Let's take a look at some other snakes with future Bob's commentary. Past Bob didn't know which snakes we were gonna use other than the inspector. So it turns out this is the Sundance Kid, and he's a breeding age male, but he's not actively breeding right now. 
he is a lot more interested in this camera, which I totally understand. I, I pulled out any other enrichment in his tub and he just has the camera here. Uh, it's a warm thing and it's different, so he's interested in it. This behavior does not tell me that he doesn't want it there or that he doesn't like it. He's not doing any posturing that tells me uh, that he's threatened by this. He's not pushing it or anything like that. Uh, I think he probably thinks it's weird and that's all. Wow, that snake we just saw was really unexpected. I can't believe the footage we got. Is that believable? Let's take a look at the next snake. Okay, so this is Ron. I did a couple of nights with him, and on this night, I removed his cold side hide to give us some more viewing room and some of his other enrichment items. So really, the camera in there and all that stuff changed is brand new to him. Now, Ron is a snake that I think of as never moving around that much because he's always in his hide. But to be fair, he's in a tub, so I don't know what he gets up to at night. If I get up at night, I can easily look in the inspector's vivarium and see what he's doing. I don't see the tubs, even though they're they're clear in the front, so I sort of can. But if I had opaque tubs, I would have no idea what my snakes get up to um, during the day or, or at night. So Ron here is uh, doing a lot more activity than, than I would have expected, although his tub is completely different than what he's normally used to. And uh, I don't know, he doesn't, he, you know, he's touching the camera, but really the camera's just sitting on the ground there, so if he touches it, it's gonna move. I don't see him necessarily bumping it or seeming upset about it, but he's definitely more focused on it than, uh, than the inspector was, that's for sure. And there he crawls over the top of it and it falls over. And here's night two. I threw that Aberfeldy. Um, that's a decent scotch, by the way. If you're if you're not a scotch drinker, good price. It's it's cheaply priced and pretty decent. Anyway, threw that in there to see how he would uh, do with it. And you know he's checking it out. He's climbing on on it. He's not doing. Oh look at that! He climbs inside. He's not doing any behavior that tells me that he's necessarily upset with it or the camera, although he is more focused on the camera than anything else, which makes sense because it, it uh, creates a heat signature. So this is a lot of activity, a lot more activity than the other snakes, um, you know, toward the items that I put in the enclosure. But I also completely reconfigured his enclosure by pulling out his cold hide and not giving him as many hiding opportunities. So there he knocked the camera over. I just don't have a good way of affixing the camera into these tubs, so they get knocked over. Wow, what happened with that snake was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Or was expected and we hardly saw him do anything. Or was just medium, just a medium reaction. Okay, we've looked at a few breeding age males and now we're gonna go to the females to see if there's any different reaction at all from a couple of females. But before we do that, let's find out what's happening in Kent's corner. Hi, welcome to your favorite TV show or internet thing, segment, whatever, Kent's Corner. Are you in the market for a really good spy camera? Well, the best spy cam you can get is this bad boy right here, the RCA VHS camcorder from 1988, back when electronics were made well. I recently used this bad boy to try to catch some hooligans outside my mom's house at night. All you do is put it into a bush and then press record. Then you just set your alarm to get up every two hours to change the VHS tape, and that's all there is to it. Now on this particular unit, the eject button doesn't work very well, which is super frustrating. But other than that, it's no problem. Incidentally, my neighbors across the street called the cops the other night because somebody was yelling into a bush at 2 a.m. <laughs> we all had a laugh when we all realized that it was just me trying to eject a tape. <laughs> and there was also some paperwork to do. Thank you for watching Ken's Corner, where electronic advice is always the best. You know, Mom thought that the days of her picking you up from the police station were over. <laughs> I know, we all had a laugh. Kent, you laughing by yourself while other people are standing around doesn't mean that you all had a laugh. Well, that's your opinion, and we're having a laugh about it now. <laughs> Let's move on. As you can see, we're in the mid-video Patreon credit scroll. Please enjoy this list of names of people who support the channel and get to be included in the secret society known as the Horde of Keepers. Here's a good group of folks. One of the things that I just started doing over there, and we're gonna do another one soon, is Patreon-only live streams, which is one of the perks that everybody on uh, the, the Patreon gets. And that's pretty cool. Look at this. 
channel sponsor, Black Box Cages. Okay, let's get on to the females. In Rob's video, he felt like his males had a problem with the camera and his females didn't. So it'll be interesting to see if my females react any differently to uh, the camera or to anything in their enclosure. So this is Dolly, and to be fair, she is not a breeding age female, but she is a snake, and we're gonna see how she feels about this camera, or how she reacts to the camera. Uh, this is, she's kind of doing the same thing that, that Ron and the Sundance Kid did, where she's very focused on it. She, I left a couple of enrichment items in there that she's had for about a week that she's kind of used to, those two little boxes, and I pulled out her cold side hide so that we had a better view of her. But she's kind of doing the same thing that the other snakes were doing. She's very focused on it. I would, again, I wouldn't say that she's threatened by it or necessarily wants it out of here, but it's hard to tell what's in a snake's brain. So I I could narrate this by going, oh my gosh, look at how, how crazed and upset she is about this. You know, I could talk about this like I was talking about the inspector when you saw his body language in the S shape and you saw him bumping me. I could kind of narrate that same way and make this seem like she's doing some dramatic things when she's really just tongue flicking and crawling on it and is very interested in it. But again, it's, it is hard for us to know what's in a snake's brain. But based on this, even though she knocked it over, I don't think she's upset with it. Wow, I'm glad I put the camera in her tub. That's why Dolly is one of the green room python's favorites. So the last snake is Lydia Dietz and she is a breeding female as of just recently. She just started breeding for her first season. I'm very excited about that. And she is, I'll just tell you, she spends most of the night almost in the same spot, but checking out the camera the whole time. I think this is pretty close to the same result that Rob got with one of his breeding females, who I think just came out of her hide, checked out the camera for a minute, and then went back to sleep. I removed Lydia's hide for this. She has a cold side hide, and I think she probably is spending more time out during the night than she normally would just because her tub is completely reconfigured. Uh, but I don't know because she's in a tub. I can see like early in the morning if she's in the front of her tub and such like that I can see because I can at least see through my tub so I know a little bit about what they get up to, but not really. And if I had opaque tubs, I would have no idea what, what my snake's normal behavior is. So I can't really tell you if this is normal for her at night or not. Um, but I can say that she doesn't seem to be threatened by the camera. She is checking it out a lot, but she's not bumping it. Again, if she bumped it, it would knock right over. Um, and she's not doing any of those behaviors that we saw from the inspector, behaviors that we know snakes do, like this kind of stuff with their coils uh, if, if they're threatened by something. So for me, I don't think any of my snakes looked threatened by the inanimate objects that I put in there, even by the camera. I think they were very interested in it, but I wouldn't say that they were threatened by it and wanted them to go away necessarily. Ever since I thought of the idea for this video, I wanted to have Lydia in this video. I just watched this over again and if I had to say that any snakes were bothered by the camera, I would say it would be possibly Ron and possibly Lydia because they spent so much time focused on the camera throughout the course of the night. I didn't really see aggressive behavior towards it from either of them, but I know that if I didn't have something with a heat signature in the corner of that tub, they wouldn't be focused on the corner of that tub. They'd be doing something else, maybe curled up sleeping, whatever. So they may have been bothered by it, but again, I didn't see aggressive behavior. Now, just because doing a quick experiment over the course of a few nights with a few snakes, just because I didn't notice aggressive behavior from my males, does that mean that I disregard the point that Rob was making? And again, the point he was making in that particular portion of the video was that your breeding males have hormones going through them and they've got instincts. And therefore, during a certain period of time uh, dur during the year, you might want to be careful about what you expose them to and you might want to be aware of how they're reacting to things. And no, I would not ignore that. That's I think that's a great point. And, and also, you know, if Rob does an experiment with his snakes, which again, he keeps very differently than I do, and he's in Malaysia, he does an experiment, and I do the exact same experiment here, I don't care what it is, we're probably gonna get quite different results because those snakes just grow up in a, in a different situation. So, uh, and also none of this is scientific, right? Because if we were doing an actual scientific study on ball python behavior, we would need a, a massive amount of snakes to, uh, to, to do this with. And, and you know, maybe the, the experiment would be that there'd have to be hundreds of 
keepers across around the world that do this exact same thing and and we log the data and see what happens in the cameras and stuff but anyway uh the point is that that rob was was making a good point and i think we should be mindful especially with our breeding males i think you should be mindful about how your snake reacts to anything if you were disappointed that we didn't do the internal snake monologues in this video i apologize i want to give future bob a chance to narrate what's actually happening in these but if you're interested in seeing a video with spy cams and internal snake dialogue, look at this video that's covering up a portion of the screen. And if you want to see more of these professionally voiced internal monologue videos, uh, let me know and maybe I'll make more. Thanks for watching. See you next week.